Well, welcome back. Today's video is going to be on popcorn. Now, I introduced this on one of the other videos when we were working with Old Blue, the blue still. And uh, so I'm going to work through this and uh, we're going to see what we can make out of this. Now, I want you to take this step by step. Um, I got this from uh, Bearded and Board. And uh, my friend down there sent this to me because he sprouted his own popcorn. And he's got this process for sprouting popcorn. And I'll show you all of this, but it, it would be better if you just go to his YouTube channel and watch that. If you want to malt any of your own grain, uh, you can use a very similar process because it requires you to uh, hydrate, dry, hydrate, wait, let it, it what it's actually doing is we're letting the seeds start to grow. And then we stop it and then knock off all the sprouts. Here's what I've got left. And you can see those, you see those little sprouts that are sticking out? Uh, that's all that's slipped. Now those were probably about an inch, inch and a half, maybe in some cases two inches long, but most of them have already been knocked off. What happens inside the kernel is that all those starches that are built up in there, which is a food source, um, is just sitting there and it's just kind of like residue. It just sits there. Now there's a lot of terminology and I'm not going to use it. Plain and simple. When you hydrate it, you start this process and you keep it at the right temperature that the seed starts to develop and the root starts to, well, the root starts to develop. And what will happen is it'll pop on one end and a sprout will start to come out. Now, what happens is, is that some of that internal kernel, uh, there's some amylase enzyme in there. Remember that? Now, in order for the seed to get all this food that it needs in order to grow, uh, it's gotta be in the form of a sugar. So that amylase starts to convert that starch to sugars so the seed can use it for energy. So what we do is once it gets to the sprouting point, it's produced, all the amylase is gonna produce. Uh, now it's just gonna start converting that and eating it up. So what we wanna do is we wanna take advantage of that. Now, I've gotta crack these because you can't put just grain in water and expect something to happen. So I'm gonna sit here and patiently throw you know, a bunch of them in a sock and then beat it with a hammer just to get them cracked so that I can, I can access the center of this grain. And then we'll take it to the next step. Well, we made short work out of that. I'm using a food processor. You see, I wanna cut all these up. I don't want a powder. I just want it to be cut up. So it's like cracked corn. And so I'm using a food processor and that's working extremely well. Oh, yeah, and that was my last load, so. Time for the next step. Well, we've moved our operation from the shed, uh, you know, the workshop. We're, so we're out of the man cave now. All right, this is what we gotta do. Um, I've got this five pounds of popcorn, okay? And I've crushed it up, so uh, most of them are ground up. It's not a powder, it's just ground up so we can get to it. And uh, then I've got this big pot. Uh, this is actually a grandfather pot it's for exactly what we're doing is what it was designed for. And you don't have to have this. You can just use a regular pot on the stove. It it's, doesn't matter. So uh, don't try to get, and I'm not gonna call this high speed, but uh, this is kind of high speed. All right, um, there's a thing known as a protein rest. Now, uh, we, all, we, we already know that, remember from a previous video that Amylase does its job inside our kernel and for our grain and converts starches to fermentable sugars at 155 degrees. Yes, but now we're going to borrow a term in a process uh, that's really, really well known in um, making beer. And when you're doing what they call an all grain beer, they go through a mashing process. And what that is, is a protein rest. And the protein rest is anywhere between 120 and 130 degrees, and you allow it to sit there. Now, the best way to describe that, because now we're working with amino acids and proteins, um, all we're doing is preparing the grain. Um, so we're gonna soak it. But we're gonna soak it at the right temperature so that all these things start to take place, and it makes everything available for us. It's like, you know, when we talk and I say, you know, take some flake corn and then, you know, heat it up, bring it up to a simmer, not to a boil, to rehydrolyze it. Well, the pro all that other stuff is already done, but now we want to hydrolyze it. And 
So we're kind of doing the same thing, but we're doing it at a lower level uh, because we've got some actions that got to take place inside that grain. That's all there is to it. Look, it's that simple. So don't get your head wrapped around it. Now, uh, and I've got my pH meter out. I put three gallons of water in here because I've only got five pounds of uh, popcorn and we haven't done this before. So what are we doing? We are experimenting. We're learning together. I mean, I can predict what I think is going to happen, but I want to I want to do this and I want you to be on this journey with me. So let's take our pH meter out and test this. Um, and just as I suspected, we're at 7.3 because this is just regular city water, but our water is really good. So I'll use that. Uh, what I want to do is I want to add some 5.2 balance pH balancer. Now, I'm going to add a little bit this a, a, a little bit of this first, um, and then stir it a little bit, and then I'm going to add the uh, the corn because I know that the corn is going to bring it down. I know that, uh, but I want to give it a head start. And the recommendation is only a tablespoon per five gallons, so I'll put it in like a teaspoon. And uh, what that's going to offer me, let me see, yeah. That's gonna off, that's gonna like a get started thing, you know? All right, turn my pH meter back on. Had a lot of discussions about pH meters too. Please, keep it simple. Oh boy, okay, yeah, now we're down to 6.5. So that works. Okay, let's add our, uh, our corn, and I'll, I'll show you, you'll see how a lot of that is like a floury, pasty, see, crunched up, and some of them didn't. You know, popcorn's real hard. You ever get them kernels in your mouth? Yeah, they're real hard. So what I need to do is I need to find my stir, and then when I do that, I'll be right. I'll be back, and we'll keep up this going. But it didn't take long to find that. All right, let's uh, let's give our mash a check here, and uh, see what it is. It's still 6.3. Okay. Well, let me add a little bit more. Um, we're going to get that pH down. About 5.2 is fine for me. I'm going to put two spoonsfuls in there. Now, you'll notice also that I'm not going through a whole process of star sand. I'm, look. This is going to ferment and be distilled. <laughs> is there a danger? There's always a danger. I don't care what you do. Uh, you really, really limit the danger if you use star sand. But in this, it, it, for this process, uh, cleanliness is more important than sanitation. Now, if you're doing beer or you're doing wine, remember it's sanitation and, and cleanliness are critical. They're absolutely critical. So. There we go. Okay, we're at 5.5. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not, I'm not going to uh, dabble or debate about, leave that out so it dries. And then I'm going to plug it in and set the, temp, uh, set the uh, control. What I'll do is I'll put a thermometer in here. There we go. And uh, when it gets up to the right temperature, I'm going to let it sit there. Now the, now, the protein rest is about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and then after that, we'll crank it up to, what, maybe 155. And we'll allow that to sit there for about 60 minutes or 90 minutes, however long it takes. And then uh, maybe we'll do a, you know, we'll do the iodine test or whatever the case may be, but we'll be able to taste it and we'll know that there's some fermentable sugars. So let's give that time to heat up and I'll be back. That, that, remember that blue, oh, blueberry. That's uh, all finished and, uh, Amazing, uh, we did that the other night. Uh, that's when I did the T500. So, uh, oh, one other thing is that, listen, if, if you're gonna call, uh, and, I, and I welcome the calls, it's not a problem. I spend most of the day on the phone. Uh, I just put you on speakerphone while I'm working around and we, we get a lot done and I really enjoy the calls. Uh, the one thing I'd ask though, is that uh, if you would refrain from calling me after you've had like, you know, a half a bottle of gin or something. <laughs> you understand. Uh, it's, it's really difficult to communicate with you at that point. So just kind of hold off and uh, let's talk. Or send me an email, of course, or comment below. Share us with your friends, all that good stuff. 
we are at 126 degrees. So four more degrees, and I'm gonna hook a five, five or six more degrees. I'm gonna get it right above 130, and I'm gonna hold it there for 20 minutes. This is called the protein rest. And um, we'll be back with you as soon as that's finished. Well, our 20 minute protein rest is finished. So what I've done is I've increased the temperature and what I'm doing is I'm tracking it. You see here now I'm at 135, I just turned it up. I'm tracking it with just a regular meat thermometer. Please don't overthink this. Uh, and I've just got the end of it dangling in there. It's, you know, the tip of it's right inside the liquid and I've just got it coming out the lid. So it, I'll, what I'll want to do is I want to bring this up to, now here's a question for everybody out there. Uh, if we're going to use the amylase to convert any starches to fermentable sugars, what temperature does it need to be? And I know I beat this to death. Yes, 155 degrees. So we're going to bring it to 155 degrees and hold it there. And uh, what's the beauty behind this pot is I just put it on the warmer and it'll stay there. Uh, but it, the pot that you're using at home is perfect. Just bring it up to 155 degrees, put the lid on it, turn the heat off, and it will maintain that temperature long enough because of the volume uh, to do its work. Just give it an opportunity. So uh, let's not overthink this and, and go crazy. Uh, it's, it's a real simple process. Now, 155 degrees, and we're gonna leave that sit there for about 60, yeah, 60 to 90 minutes, and then we'll do a iodine test. Then, of course, we'll draw some off and we'll do a specific gravity. You know, I'm always asking that question. Uh, we've got to have a data point to start from, and if we don't, after that, we're just plain flat out guessing. That doesn't help anybody. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll be back when she's 155, and after I've let it sit for a while. You don't need to watch that. Okay, well, first of all, it's been 90 minutes. We've allowed this to steep at 155 degrees for 90 minutes, so uh, I believe we're finished. So what I've done so far is I've taken out a spoon and I've got a little bit of that liquid and I put it in a spoon. And we're gonna do, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the iodine check, the test, to see if there are any starches left or have we converted all those starches to fermentable sugars. And the way we do that, I did this earlier, um, I didn't put it on video, but I did this earlier. And if you take a drop of iodine and drop it in the liquid and it makes a great big black blob, uh, that's all starch. Uh, but if you put a drop of iodine and it dissipates and or disappears, then there is no starch because what the iodine does is it attaches itself to starch. So we're going to show you that. Now, this is called, uh, this is iodine tincture. Uh, if you get the clear iodine, it's not going to work. Okay, clear iodine does just most of us uh, older folks know about iodine because you always put iodine on like little cuts and stuff like that. It's a brown liquid. Now watch what happens to this. And there's my spoon full of the, uh, the mash. I'm going to drop one drop in there. And you see how that dissipates? Look at that, it's just, it, it, there's no black in there whatsoever, it's just that brownish tint, and it's also dissipating to a point to where it's almost disappearing. That, my friends, indicates that we have no starch left in our kettle. So, now let's find out what the gravity is. Now, remember this is, right now it's probably about 148 degrees. Uh, and we could use a hydrometer, which I'm really, really, I really favor hydrometers because they're so direct and they give you information right away. Um, and they're so easy to use. But the correction factor on a hydrometer, um, and the one that I have only goes up to 105 degrees. So if whatever you're dropping it in is 105 degrees, you add seven points to it. Well, we're a way above that. So what I have is I've got my uh, refractometer. And my refract now I've got an ATC refractometer. So if you get one that says ATC, and then there's a number that's called that's what that is. Is ATC means auto temperature correcting. So it corrects for temperature. And uh, what I want to do is I'm going to take a one of these small pipettes that I have. I'm going to grab a little bit of this, and I'll, it only takes one or two drops on the on the sight glass. And then you close the shutter 
And then we look at it through the light and see what it says. My goodness. Our initial gravity right now with five pounds of popcorn and three gallons of water is 1.020. Not real high, but we put five pounds in three gallons of water. So um, we now have a data point to start with. So what do you think I should do with this? Well, you know, when, when, when I do a mash, see, I'm gonna use the noun. When I do a mash, um, before I go to distill, what I'm looking for is probably about 1.090. Uh, and th to me, that's just a manageable level. So um, what I need to do with this is that if I'm 1.020, I know that I get 39 gravity points per gallon per pound of sugar. So if I added three pounds of sugar to that in that three gallons, that would raise it 39 gravity points and I would be at almost 60. 1.060, somewhere right there. Actually 1.059, okay. But uh, I wanna go to nine zero, so I'll probably add another two or three pounds. And then I'll just test it until I get where I need it to be. Then we'll ferment it, and then you and I will uh, distill it and see what the flavor of malted popcorn delivers. How's that? And until next time, stick with us because we're gonna go through the fermentation and the distilling process. Happy distilling.